This is the ultimate Fortnite Chapter 5 Season 4 optimization guide. You will get at least a 10% FPS boost, much lower input delay, and no more stutters after following this guide. And to prove that these optimizations actually work, I went from 240 to 440 FPS on my Nvidia laptop, and on my AMD desktop, we went from 920 FPS to 1090. I will cover the basics like Fortnite and Windows settings to advanced optimizations including desktop composition and latency tolerance. It doesn't matter if you're on AMD or Nvidia, laptop or desktop, low end or high end no matter what these optimizations will still boost your fps and reduce input delay starting off with the absolute basics that you must follow no matter what we're going to press the windows key and type in graphic settings in here select change default graphic settings and you'll see optimizations for windowed games if you don't already know 99% of games run better in full screen, but if you do prefer to play Fortnite on windowed full screen, be sure to have this on because it allows you to get full screen performance while being able to tab out of the game with no delay. If you see a setting in here called hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, turn that on as well. After we're done with that, we're going to go back into the graphic settings, then click on browse right here, and we're going to find our Fortnite game file. So it's going to be in your program files, then Epic Games, Fortnite, Fortnite game, binaries, Win64. And there's going to be this biggest file right here that's about 300 megabytes you're going to click on it and then click on options and make sure it's set to high performance and save it this will make it so that it completely ignores your integrated graphics and specifically uses your gpu so that you get the most performance out of both your cpu and your graphics card going back to the windows settings you'll see the gaming tab so click on that click game mode and enable it. It's a super basic optimization, but it disables restart notifications and driver updates, which in turn gives you better and more stable FPS. For those of you who like to use Discord or Google in the background while you play, especially on a new PC, make sure that hardware acceleration is turned off. It's super easy to forget. Next, we're gonna go into our actual Fortnite settings. Usually full screen is better, but if you have full screen optimizations enabled, then windowed mode will not feel that much worse. If you have a 1440p monitor like I do, make sure your 3D resolution is set to 75% so you're actually playing on 1080p. This is the same if you're on a 1080p monitor and you want to play at a lower resolution. Do not change the game resolution, just change your 3D resolution. And of course, VSync is straight up garbage, so do not turn that shit on. And for rendering mode, do not pick anything that isn't performance mode. I fully reverted every tweak on my PC to show you guys the performance, and you'll very quickly notice that the game stutters a lot more on DX12 compared to performance mode, even though I'm on a fully AMD PC. I have a 7600 X and 6900 XT, and people are always talking about DX12 being more consistent especially on amd which is definitely not the case for nvidia users there's an extra step that will drastically decrease your input delay in order to do this we will be switching the game to dx11 and it'll ask you to restart the game to apply changes the reason behind doing this is because dx11 settings are directly linked to our performance mode settings so we're going to make sure everything in the display settings is set to low or off except for nvidia reflex where we will be setting it to on plus boost which nvidia themselves highly recommends you turn on if, however, you are running into poor performance or frame pacing, you can turn it back off, but most people will benefit from the reduced input delay. Once you're done with this, you can switch back to performance mode because that is still the best rendering API for Fortnite. Make sure that you cap your FPS to your monitor's refresh rate. But if your game is stuttering at all from doing this, I recommend capping your FPS using RevaTuner or some other external software. This is exactly what fixed my stutters on my 3060 laptop. However, if you don't want to download anything extra, you can simply cap your FPS a bit higher to avoid stutters. And definitely try capping your FPS lower than your monitor refresh rate if you're still experiencing stutters because maybe you might be pushing your PC a bit too hard and that'll cause stutters as well. In the rest of the display settings, make sure that all of the display settings are low and disable GPU crash debugging because it says specifically that it will come at a small performance cost, which is not worth it. And then go into the third tab, which is the game settings and disable all of the replays. Hop into your Epic Games Launcher, click the three dots next to Fortnite and click on options. Make sure you don't install anything you don't need so that you don't bloat your SSD and check off the box that says pre-downloaded streamed assets because that is definitely definitely a number one culprit for FPS stutters. Xbox Game Bar is the best way to kill your FPS, so if you want to get rid of it, run Windows PowerShell as an administrator and then copy and paste the text from the description to permanently remove Xbox Game Bar. If you're weird and you like to use Xbox Game Bar to record and clip your game, please switch to OBS. It takes way less resources and you're going to lose one FPS instead of 40. Press your Windows key and type in core isolation and in here you'll see memory integrity. Just make sure both of these are off. Then go to your Windows settings and in here you're going to go into privacy and security. Go to general and disable everything that's in here and inking and typing personalization. Turn this off as well. Diagnostics and feedback. Make sure everything here is off and also set this to never. In activity history, 
just turn it off because nobody wants this. And if you want, you can also clear your activity history right here. And then in searching windows, be sure to set this to classic instead of enhanced. Disable your location services, then go to startup apps and disable as many as you can. And only switch on anything that you actually want to open when you start up your PC. And of course, after doing the startup apps, it only makes sense to do your installed apps as well. So if you have anything that you don't need in here as well, you can remove it because a lot of these programs that you don't use might just be running in the background. But because I hate Microsoft OneDrive, I'm going to delete that dumb shit. And just make sure you don't uninstall something that you don't understand. A long time ago, my dumbass decided to uninstall Microsoft Visual C++. And of course, you need that to run basically every video game. So don't be stupid like me. To finish up with the basic optimizations, we're going to go into our network and internet settings. In here, you're going to click on advanced network settings and then click on network reset. And all you got to do next is restart your PC. Every time I notice that my ping goes up higher, I just do a quick network reset. And apart from exit lag, it's definitely the best way to immediately reduce your ping. If you copied all of these basic optimizations, you will notice better FPS, better ping and better delay. But none of this matters if you didn't optimize your monitor settings. A lot of YouTubers recommend switching your monitor's response time to the second fastest preset because usually the fastest preset introduces poor frame timing, ghosting or other similar things. But personally, as someone who has used 60 hertz 144 hertz and 240 hertz be sure to try the fastest preset and the second fastest to see which one feels better for you and if you're on a laptop connecting an external monitor boosts your fps like crazy but if you want to see a 200 fps increase like you see right here you're gonna have to do some of these advanced optimizations for the advanced optimizations, it's going to work differently on different systems, so be sure to test out each optimization individually to make the most out of them. Before we do any slightly more complicated Windows optimizations, be sure to create a restore point by pressing your Windows key and typing restore point, and you'll be able to revert back to your previous settings in case these optimizations don't work for you. Next, we're going to go into the registry editor. Unfortunately, system restores do not affect the registry editor, so make sure that you press on export and name it something that you can remember in case you run into any instability issues. As with any other optimization, in this video, I strongly recommend that you try everything individually so that you can get the most out of these optimizations. As you can see, changing one single value boosted my friend's FPS and Valorant by 170. I'll leave the directory in the description for you to copy and paste, but over here you should change the value from the default 24 to the new value 1A. However, changing registry editor values is a lot of work, so in order to facilitate this process, we will be using CTT. I know you've already used this utility 8,000 times, but if you have a fresh PC or you didn't optimize since last season, it's a good idea to boot up the software again. All you got to do is open Windows PowerShell as administrator and copy and paste this text from the description into it and then press enter. You'll be hit with this window so just click on tweak. Here you can copy my selection or you can make your own but if you're on a laptop never disable hibernation because that will absolutely destroy your battery life when unplugged. If you were waiting for me to talk about the ultimate performance plan you can also activate it right here in the Chris Titus tech utility and once you have everything selected press run tweaks and then move into the update section where it's recommended that you pick the middle option but of course, if you don't want a delay feature and security updates, you can set it back to default on the left. Once you see this window pop up on your screen saying tweaks are finished, we are good to go. Now, instead of focusing on the CPU processes, background services, we're going to focus on GPU optimizations. If you're on AMD, I recommend using the software called Radeon Software Slimmer. But if you're like me and you like using their overclocking and recording features, you can ignore this and you won't lose out on much performance at all because there isn't as much bloat as NVIDIA has. However, on NVIDIA, we're going to uninstall and reinstall our drivers, except without all of the bloatware. You can download the software from CTT, but you can also use the link down in the description and you can choose between their installer and the portable self-extracting download. I do want to mention that I accidentally forgot to boot into safe mode, which is something that you should be doing if you run DDU. But I'm going to show you right here that it's not really a big deal if you forget to do that, but it's highly recommended. You'll get a warning as well as a readme file that pops up, which makes it impossible to make a mistake here. These are the options I went with on my NVIDIA graphics card. And of course, if you want to do a fresh install of your AMD drivers, you can select AMD instead of NVIDIA here. Once you're happy with all of the settings, you can click on clean and restart. Now to do a fresh and proper install of the NVIDIA graphics drivers without any of the bloatware we're going to download it from tech power up and of course as usual i will leave a very convenient link down in the description so you don't get lost in here you can select whatever driver you want to install but if you haven't had any issues with your previous driver i recommend reinstalling the same one there's usually never a good reason to install the latest driver once it comes out once you selected a driver click on next and if you're doing pure gaming i recommend that you only download the display driver i still highly recommend against using nvidia's geforce experience or nvidia app to clip your game it's a lot less customizable than OBS and also performs worse. And just like any fresh install of an NVIDIA driver, it's important that you run your game a few times before you judge the new driver. It doesn't happen on AMD, but 
but on nvidia it takes like three games for all of the textures and stuff to load in it's really weird you'll get stutters for the first few games and personally i think the 552.44 driver is the best nvidia driver especially if you're on an rtx 3060 laptop like i am but anyways once you've installed your brand new drivers let's get right into optimizing our gpus you might have expected me to pull out the same nvidia control panel settings and that's exactly what I'm going to do. On AMD, it's very easy to reduce your input delay with one click. So just go to the graphics settings in the AMD software and enable Radeon Anti-Lag. But if you guys are looking for something that can optimize your PC in about five clicks, this is the app for you. The free version of this app will literally let you do every single thing I've done in this video in about five seconds by clicking some switches. If you've been on the channel, you've probably seen this app in the background of my videos. I've been kind of gatekeeping it. There's also this extremely cool electron color theme. So, you know, that's a great reason to download it. But on on a serious note along with all of the free optimizations you can also create your own power plan and it is marginally better than any power plan i have ever tested including the ultimate performance power plan that i was talking about earlier in this video but anyways with the free plan we also have a cleaner and we also have a very convenient deep bloat tool if you like the free version of this app there's also a premium version that includes tweaks that you will not find anywhere on the internet and is pretty generous for 30 dollars compared to other youtubers try out vtrol for free with the link in the description and if you like it consider purchasing the premium version for $30. But if you do want to continue tweaking your PC by yourself, check out this video next.